Hey everyone, it's Professor Primerton. In this video we're going to talk about multiplication and division of real numbers. So let's start off this section with a problem that we're going to see later in the course. Suppose that you took 30 hours to fill a swimming pool, and the swimming pool holds 1,800 gallons of water. One question that might be asked is how many gallons of water are used in filling the swimming pool each hour? So what this is actually representing is a division problem. You are wanting to know what is the rate of change in how fast is a swimming pool being filled up with water each hour. So if you take 1,800 gallons of water and you divide by 30 hours that it takes to fill the swimming pool, it actually took you on average 60 gallons of water every hour. So in this section we're going to look at multiplication and division of real numbers a little bit more in detail. So in this video we're going to look at multiplication of any combination of positive and negative numbers and whether the answer will be positive or negative. Simplify expressions using the order of operations, again using multiplication. Multiply positive and negative fractions. Multiply using the multiplication property of zero. Divide any combination of positive and negative numbers. Divide positive and negative fractions and also simplify expressions using the order of operations, but this time with division. So let's start with multiplication of real numbers. So we know earlier in the course that multiplication is really just repeated additions. So if you have 4 times 2, it's really adding 2 4 times. So we're going to use this knowledge along with our knowledge from the last couple videos on adding and subtracting real numbers to find out whether the answer will be positive or will the answer be negative based on how many negatives are in the problem when we are multiplying. So let's start with example 1. Multiplication of real numbers. Simplify each of the following expressions using multiplication of real numbers. So number one, four times two. We're going to approach this problem as multiplication is repeated addition, so we can understand whether the answer will be positive or negative. So four times two means you have four twos added together. And we know that answer will be eight. Now notice that you had positive four and positive two. When you multiply, the answer will be positive. So this means if your two numbers you're multiplying are the same sign, so will the answer. The answer is positive. Okay, number two. You have four times negative two. This means you have negative two added with itself four times. So negative two plus negative two plus another negative two and then one more. So from the last section, we talked about adding signed numbers or negative numbers. Negative 2 plus negative 2, they are the same sign. So you add the numbers and you keep the sign they have in common. So negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4, plus negative 2 is negative 6, plus another negative 2 will give you negative 8. So this time the answer was negative. But notice in the multiplication problem, you have one positive, one positive 4, and the other was negative, negative 2. So if they are one negative, and one positive, the answer will be negative. Okay, so number three. This time the negative is on the outside of the multiplication. So it's the opposite of four times two. So let's do four times two and then you keep the sign in the answer. So this time we have the opposite of 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is the opposite of 8, so negative 8. So again, this time you had 1 negative, you had negative 4, and you have positive 2. So this is 1 negative, 1 positive, and again, the answer turned out to be negative. Okay, one more. We have both numbers negative this time, negative 4 and negative 2. So this is the opposite of taking negative 2 and adding with negative 2 four times. So we know from the previous problem, number 2, we took negative 2 plus itself four times, you get negative 8. So this would give us the opposite of negative 8, which is positive 8. So notice that this problem had two negatives. You had a negative 4 and a negative 2 when you multiply, and you get positive 8 as the answer. So if they are both the same sign again, 
So this time they were both negative. The answer is still positive. So just like number one, if they're both positive, the answer is positive because they have the same sign. Number four, the answer was positive because you have the same sign when you're multiplying the two numbers together. So let's summarize what we found out from the previous four problems in this table. So if the two numbers you're multiplying are the same sign, like 3, positive 3, and positive 5, the answer will be positive 15. If the problem has the same sign but they're both negative, like negative 3 times negative 5, the answer is still positive. But if you have different signs multiplied together, so one's positive and one's negative, either case, positive 3 and negative 5, or negative 3 and positive 5, the answer turned out to be negative in both cases. Okay, so what we've just found out is that there's a rule when you are multiplying real numbers together. So if you want to multiply any two real numbers, you multiply their absolute values, so you ignore the signs basically, you multiply the numbers as they are, you figure out the sign of the answer using these two rules. Number one, the answer is positive if both numbers have the same sign. In other words, if they're both positive or both negative, your answer will be positive. However, the answer is negative if the numbers have opposite signs. So one is positive and one is negative, then your product will be negative. Okay, so now let's talk about using the order of operations because we have multiplication now and we also know how to add and subtract real numbers from the previous couple videos. So in the next example, we're going to combine the order of operations with the rule that we just found out for multiplying real numbers to simplify expressions. So keep in mind, with the order of operations, you must still do parentheses or grouping symbols, then exponents, and then you can move on to multiplication. But you still have to remember the grouping symbols first, and then the exponents second. So example two, order of operations. Simplify each of the following expressions using the order of operations. Number one, four times negative three plus six times negative five subtract 10. So now that we know what the rules are for multiplication, we don't actually have to use repeated addition anymore. Four times negative three, one's positive, one's negative, so the answer will be negative, so negative, so negative 12. And then plus, you have six times negative five, one is positive, one is negative, so your answer will be negative, so negative 30. And then you have minus 10, that is really like adding negative 10. So negative 12 plus negative 30 is negative 42. And then another plus negative 10 gives you negative 52. Okay, and the rule that we used for multiplying real numbers was that if you have one positive and one negative, then the product is negative. And we use it twice in this problem. So number two, this time you notice that there's exponents in the problem, so we have to make sure that we do the exponent expressions first before we start multiplying. So you see negative three times negative two, but it's not negative three times negative two first. You have to do negative two to the third power first. Same thing with the negative four squared. So you have negative three, we'll just stay because we need to do the exponents first. Negative two cubed is negative two times negative two times negative two. Subtract five. And then you have negative 4 squared, so that means negative 4 times negative 4. So negative 3 times negative 2, they're both negative, and you're multiplying, so the answer will be positive. So positive 6, and then you still have a negative 2, and another negative 2. That needs to be multiplied. Subtract. So then we have 5 times negative 4 times negative 4. So now let's do the next multiplication. You have 6 times negative 2. One's positive six, one's a negative two, so the answer will be negative, so negative 12 times negative two. Subtract five times negative four times negative four. Okay, keep going. This time we have negative 12 times negative two, so they're both the same sign. So when you multiply, you'll get positive 24 minus five times negative four times negative four. Okay, equals 24. Now. If there's a sign in front of the five, we'll take the sign with the five. So this is really negative five times negative four. So that will be positive 20. So plus 20 times negative four. And now positive 20 times negative four will be negative 80. So 24 
minus 80, which is negative 56. Okay, one more, number three. This time we have grouping symbols and exponents to worry about before multiplication. So we have parentheses, six minus four, all to the third power, subtract four times in parentheses, two subtract five, all to the second power. So let's worry about the grouping symbols first. Six minus four is two, so two to the third power, minus four, two subtract five is negative three, and that is to the second power. So two to the third is two times two times two, Subtract 4 times negative 3 in parentheses squared means negative 3 times itself. So positive 2 times positive 2 will give you a positive answer. It'll be positive 4 times positive 2 again will give you positive 8. Subtract 4 times negative 3 times negative 3. So now let's do the other multiplication. You have negative 4 times negative 3. That will be positive 12. And then you have the negative 3 that you still need to multiply by 12. So 12 times negative 3 is negative 36. So 8 minus 36 is negative 28. So keep in mind, the other rule for multiplication is that if you have both numbers the same sign, then the product is positive. And those are the two rules for multiplication. If you have both numbers the same sign, the answer will be positive when you multiply. And if one number is positive and the other number is negative, then your product, your answer, is always going to be negative. So example three says you're burning calories from fast food. The following figures, these bar charts or bar graphs, gives the calories burned in one hour for a variety of exercise by a person weighing 150 pounds and the calories that are consumed by eating some popular fast foods. Find the net change in the calories. So that, in other words, net change just means we're going to be subtracting how many calories that we actually consume from fast food from the number of calories that we actually burn from exercise. When you bowl for two hours and that you are eating a Whopper. So let's use the order of operations. We have bowling for two hours and then we have fast food. We are consuming one Whopper. So Bowling for two hours. Let's figure that out first. This bar graph gives you how many calories are burned in one hour. So bowling is this bar. You are burning 265 calories each hour. So calories burned. Two hundred sixty-five calories each hour. And so that is 530 calories. Okay, on the other hand, this other bar graph gives us how many calories are consumed from eating fast food. Well, if you eat a Burger King Whopper, that's 630 calories. So calories consumed, 630. Okay, but now they actually ask us to find the net change. So the net change in calories what that means is after you eat the Whopper and you um, bowl for two hours are you going to be at a negative number of calories burned or are you going to be a positive number of calories burned? So we have 530 calories from exercising and we're going to add negative 630 because that's working against the exercise consuming the whopper so we are actually at a net change of negative 100 calories so the whopper actually gave us 100 calories more than we actually have burned in exercise all right so now let's move on to multiplication of fractions so we've already talked about multiplying fractions previously if you want to multiply fractions two fractions together you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. You do not need a common denominator to multiply fractions. But what's nice is 
the rule that we just used with multiplication of real numbers can still be applied even for fractions, because fractions are real numbers. So, in other words, if both numbers are positive, the answer will be positive. If both fractions are negative, the answer will also be positive. But if they are opposite signs of fractions that you're multiplying, the answer will be negative. So, example four, multiplying fractions. Simplify each of the following expressions involving multiplication of real numbers. Number one, negative three-fourths times five-sevenths. So one's positive and one's negative. So the answer will be negative. And now multiply the, the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. So three times five is 15. Four times seven is 28. And nothing will reduce between 15 and 28. So this fraction is in lowest terms. And the rule that we used was one positive, one negative, then the product is negative. Okay, number two. You have negative two-thirds times negative three divided by two. So both numbers that we are multiplying together, both fractions are negative, so the answer will be positive. Multiply the numerators together, you get six. Multiply the denominators together, you get six. And six divided by six is one. So positive one is the product. And the rule is both numbers were the same sign. So the product is positive. So number three, you have an integer, negative eight, times one half. Keep in mind that you can always make an integer a fraction by placing it over one. So this is really negative eight divided by one times one half. So one number is negative, the other number is positive, so the answer will be negative. Then you have eight times one in the numerator, that's eight. One times two in the denominator, that's two. And eight divided by two can be simplified, it's four. So the answer will be negative four. So again, if one number is positive and one number is negative, when you multiply, then the product is negative. So that takes care of multiplying fractions. You multiply the numerators together, you multiply the denominators together, and keep in mind that you can still use the rule for multiplying real numbers even with fractions. Alright, so now the multiplication property of zero. This is a very easy property to use. The property says that if you are multiplying any real number a by zero, the product will always be zero. So if you take a times zero, the answer is zero. If you take negative a times zero, the answer is zero. So if you multiply by zero in any way, the answer will always be zero. So example five, multiplication property is zero. Simplify each of the following expressions using multiplication of real numbers. So number one, you have one twelfth times zero. Well, you're multiplying by zero, the answer is zero. Number two, negative three times nine thirteenths times zero. Even if one of the factors is zero, then the answer will be zero. So if you're multiplying by zero, you get zero. And then with number three, same thing, 0 0.026 times zero times 5,832, the answer will still be zero because one of the factors in each of these products is zero. So the rule is the product of any real number and zero will always be zero. No matter how many numbers are multiplied. So you can multiply two numbers, the answer will be zero if one of them is zero. If you're multiplying by 17 numbers together, if one of them is zero, the answer will still be zero when you multiply. Okay, so now let's move on to division of positive and negative real numbers. So we're going to look at this in terms of the same way we did with multiplication of real numbers. We're going to find out, is the answer going to be positive or is the answer going to be negative when you divide two numbers? 
Okay, so let's start off with a rule, dividing real numbers. If A and B are any real numbers, and B is not zero, and that's going to be important, then the following is always true. A divided by B, or you can write it in fraction form with the fraction bar. A is the numerator and B is the, the, the denominator. B cannot be zero because otherwise we would be dividing by zero, which is, we know, undefined. You can always rewrite division to be in terms of multiplication. So A is in the numerator, so you can take A times 1 divided by B, because B is in the denominator. It stays in the denominator. So now that we changed division into multiplication, we can use the same four properties as we had before. If both numbers are the same sign, then your quotient will be positive. If one of the numbers is negative and the other is positive, then the quotient will be negative. So one thing you have to be a little careful about is the use of parentheses when you are implying multiplication. So if you see the expression a times 1 divided by b, that is multiplication. You're taking a times the fraction 1 divided by b. It can be written this way as well. Without parentheses, you can use the little tiny dot to imply multiplication. But this gets a little confusing when you use mixed numbers. Mixed numbers are written this way. It's a and 1 divided by b. So mixed numbers would be like 2 and 1 third. If you want to rewrite mixed numbers, this does not mean a times 1 over b if it's a mixed number. It really means a plus 1 over b. You have 2 and 1 third. If it has parentheses, though, that's always multiplication. That would not mean mixed number. Example 6, division of real numbers. Simplify each of the following expressions using division of real numbers. So this will go very quick because we know the four rules that we had with multiplication. 12 divided by 4, both are positive, so the answer is positive. So both are the same sign. Then the quotient is positive. Okay, number two. You have 12, positive 12, divided by negative 4. So one's positive, one's negative. The answer will be negative. So negative 3, and this is 1 positive, 1 negative. Then the quotient is negative. So same as number 3, you have negative 12 in the numerator divided by positive 4. So one's negative, one's positive. The answer is negative. Same reason. You have one positive, one negative. Then the quotient is negative. Okay, and then number four, they're both negative. Negative 12 divided by negative four will give you a positive answer. And the rule was both the sign then the quotient is positive. All right, so now let's look at how do you divide fractions. So if you want to divide fractions, you can still use the properties of any real number that we've talked about. So remember that if you are dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. So example seven, dividing fractions, simplify each of the following expressions involving the division of real numbers. Number one, three-fourths divided by five-sevenths. We will rewrite this into a multiplication problem. You have three-fourths, you keep the first fraction the same, but then you change division to multiplication and you multiply by the reciprocal. That would be seven-fifths. Now multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator, and you would get 21 divided by 20, which as a mixed number would be 1 and 1 20th. It's okay to leave it as an improper fraction, or if you want to change it to a mixed number, that's fine too. This is what I was talking about earlier. This does not mean 1 times 1 20th. It's 1 and 1 20th. If they put parentheses around the 1 20th, then it would be multiplication rather than a mixed number. And the case was both the same sign the quotient is positive.
Okay, number two. One's negative and one's positive this time, so keep the first fraction the same because we're dividing. Multiply by the reciprocal means multiply by five thirds. And now multiply straight across. Negative seven times five is negative 35. Eight times three is 24. And that is already in lowest terms. But if you want to change it to improper, if you want to change this improper fraction to mixed number, it'd be negative one and 11 24ths. So this time one was positive and one was negative. So one positive, one negative, then the quotient is negative. Okay, and then one more, number three, you have positive 10 divided by negative 5, 6. So one's positive, one's negative. Keep in mind, the answer will be negative. But this time, we don't have two fractions. We can make 10 divided by 1 a fraction. So 10 divided by 1 times the reciprocal negative six fifths. So now multiply straight across numerator times numerator. 10 times negative six is negative 60. Divided by one times five is five. This one does simplify. Negative 60 divided by five is negative 12. And we use the same rule. One was positive, one was negative. which we know by now that the quotient means it's going to be negative. Okay, and now a couple more things left in this section. We can use the order of operations involving division. So we can use the same order of operations, grouping symbols first or parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division, but you have to go from left to right. And then finally, addition and subtraction going from left to right. Most of the time, it might be easier to do division if you have the division bar. So that's what we're going to see in example eight. Example eight, order of operations. Simplify each of the following expressions using order of operations. So number one, three times negative four plus nine divided by six. So keep in mind, division bar just separates the numerator and denominator. So the order of operations would be, you do the numerator first, you do the denominator, if there's any operations in the denominator, and then you look for exponents. So 3 times negative 4 is negative 12, plus 9, divided by 6. Keep going with the numerator. You have negative 12 plus 9 is negative 3, divided by 6. And now you can do the division. Negative 3 divided by 6, the answer will be negative, because one's negative, one's positive. 3 divided by 6 is 1 half. 3 goes into the numerator one time, 3 goes into 6 two times. Okay, number 2. This time we have 6 times negative 2 plus 5 times negative 3 in the numerator. 5 times 4 subtract 11 in the denominator. So again, do the numerator and denominator separately. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12 plus 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. We're using the rules that we learned earlier in this video. One's positive, one's negative. When you multiply, then the answer will be negative. Divide by 5 times 4 is 20. They're both positive, so the answer is positive. Subtract 11. Negative 12 plus negative 15. Now, keep in mind that this is a different rule. This is a rule that we learned earlier in previous videos. We are adding this time. So if you're adding signed numbers and they are the same sign, you keep the sign and you add the numbers. So negative 27 divided by 20 minus 11 is 9. And now one's positive and one's negative when you divide. You keep the negative. 27 divided by 9 is 3. So negative 3. Okay, number 3. You have 5 squared. Subtract 3 squared in the numerator. Negative 5 plus 3 in the denominator. So 5 squared is 25. Subtract 3 squared. Now this is very important. This negative is not with the 3. This negative is saying the opposite of 3 squared. So do 3 squared first you get 9, and make sure you keep the negative between the 25 and the 9. Negative 5 plus 3, we'll just keep it the same for now. That way we can do addition and subtraction all at once. 25 minus 9 gives you 16. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. And now we have one positive and one negative. When you divide, that means the answer is 
answer will be negative 8. So negative 8. Okay, one more. Number 4, you have 4 plus 3 in parentheses squared in the numerator, the opposite of 4 squared, and then subtract 3 squared. So parentheses, 4 plus 3 gives you 7 squared in the numerator. The denominator is the opposite of 4 squared. That negative isn't saying negative 4. It's the opposite of 4. So 4 squared is 16, but you've got to keep the negative. So negative 16. And then this is saying the same thing. Opposite of 3 squared. So negative 9. So 7 squared is 49. Divided by negative 16 minus 9 is negative 25. And you can move this negative from the denominator out in front of the fraction, if you like. So negative 49 25 and you can keep the answer as an improper fraction. Okay, one more thing we need to talk about. So division with the number zero. Is the, if the zero is in the numerator, or is the zero in the denominator? There's a difference between the two answers. So for every division problem, there's always going to be an associated multiplication problem that involves the same real numbers. So we're going to visualize what is the relationship between zero in the numerator versus zero in the denominator using multiplication. So let's look at this problem. Dividing zero by any number other than zero is allowed. So if zero is in the numerator, you can divide by any number other than zero, and the answer will always give you zero. Now to see why this is true, let's say we take zero divided by five. Just for example, zero divided by five is zero. Now why is that true? It's because if you take the denominator and you multiply by the answer, you will get the numerator. So zero is the answer times by the denominator, you should get the numerator. And that's true, zero times five is zero. Now on the other hand, if you're dividing by zero, that's not allowed in real numbers. So let's say you actually can divide five by zero. So if you take five divided by zero and you get some number, let's see what that means with multiplication. So five divided by zero, it should be undefined, but we're going to say it's a number. Just, just figure out if it actually makes any sense. So now, using multiplication, if you take the denominator, 0, times by the answer, n, any real number, the answer should be the numerator. Well, any number times 0 should give you 0, and it doesn't give you 5. So that's why this doesn't make any sense. 5 divided by 0 is impossible to get any real number. So this is why 5 divided by 0 is undefined. It is not a real number. You can't actually do the division at all. And a good way to think about this, the difference between the two, is this is saying you have 5 slices of cake. Divided among 0 people. So you have five slices of cake, and you want to divide it among zero people. There isn't a problem here. You can't divide slices of cake to zero people. There's not division at all. So this makes no sense. And so is undefined. The operation is undefined if you have zero in the denominator. So let's summarize what we just found out. The rule is dividing by zero. Division by zero is not defined. In other words, if you have any number divided by zero, it's undefined or doesn't exist. However, if you take zero and divide by any number other than zero, then you get zero as the answer. So if zero is divided by any number, you will get zero. And that's because zero times anything will always give you zero. So let's finish up our discussion on multiplication and division of real numbers. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about properties of real numbers.